our last video of this section, and I want you to say hi to my parents. Hi, hi, hi y'all. <laughs> okay, let's get started. We are going to start doing our video with division properties. You so far have done multiplication, and you have done power to a power, and now we're going to divide. So let's get ready with our first problem. Um, actually, you don't need to write this one down. We're just going to look at the work and see how it goes, and then uh, we'll do a problem all together. Do you see how this says 3 to the 5th power? Well, since that's 3 to the 5th power, we're going to put three, five threes out here, and then 3 to the 3rd has three threes. And then if you notice, you can cancel these off by marking off each three that matches up. You have th two threes left over, so that's three to the second power, and then your final answer would be nine. Okay. Now, let's try these two together. Number one, two to the seventh. Now, you could write out seven twos, and you could write out two twos on the bottom, but if you notice, two of these are going to be canceled with two of those, so we're going to subtract and make it two to the fifth power. And number two, with variables, you're going to have four x's at the top, three x's at the bottom. Those are all going to cancel and leave you with how many x's? x to the first. You don't have to put that one if you don't want to. Number three, pause, write it down for a moment. Now, these are going to get quickly more difficult. On the bottom, you have to square everything before dividing. So I'm going to rewrite the top, d to the fourth, e to the third, over d to the second, e to the second. Now I can subtract the exponents. 4 minus 2 is d to the second. It goes on the top of the, of the fraction because the 4 is larger. 3 minus 2 is e to the first. It goes on the top of the fraction because the 3 is larger. Now when there's nothing in the denominator, you don't have to put um, anything down there. Okay, now we're going to do quotients with fractions. That's dividing with fractions. When you have two-thirds to the third, that means two to the third, which is this set of twos, and three to the third, which is this set of threes. And basically that just means you're doing two to the third over three to the third, which would be eight over 27. Isn't that cute? Notice that the exponents in the end are the um, same as the exponents in the beginning. All right, number four, that's going to be four squared over seven squared, whoops, which is 16 over 49. Number five, now we have some letters in there. Well, this doesn't this look like a lot of fun. So I have to do the fourth power to everything, everything on the top and everything on the bottom. So I'm going to do three to the fourth, d to the eighth over e to the fourth, and f to the fourth. Now the only thing I'm going to simplify is this three to the fourth because the d, the e, and the f cannot be canceled because they're not any of the same letters. So my final answer is three times three times three times three, which is 81 d to the eighth over e to the fourth, f to the fourth. Number six, now doesn't that look fun? All right, we are going to start with the innermost parentheses take care of that then we're going to cancel any side anything inside the big parenthesis and then the last thing i'm going to do is square everybody let's get started i'm going to rewrite the top as 2x cubed over x cubed y cubed with a big giant square on the outside and again instead of squaring everybody and then canceling i'm going to cancel first look at the x cubes they are both the same so x cubed, 3 minus 3 is x to the 0, which is 1, so I'm not going to write anything down. I have a 2 on top. The y cubed is just going to stay on the bottom because I'm not changing it in any way. Now I need to square everybody, so that's going to be 4 over y to the 6. Remember that you multiply the exponents when you're doing power to a power. Number 7. Now we have a negative exponent. The negative exponent means switch it, but when you have a fraction, we're going to call it flip it. So I'm going to rewrite this fraction as 4 thirds and change that negative 3 to a positive 3. OK, 
Okay, now I have to cube everybody. So that's 4 to the 3rd over 3 to the 3rd. 4 times 4 times 4 is 64 over 27. So I want you to notice, anytime you have a negative exponent, the 3 has to go in the denominator, the 4 has to go in the numerator, and then you change it to a positive exponent. Okay, somehow we're going back to number 5. That's special. Okay, so now I have another fraction. I have a negative exponent. I looked inside, I don't see that anything is going to be able to be canceled. So a negative exponent with a fraction means to flip it. So I'm going to flip the fraction over and change the 2 to a positive 2. I look inside, I don't see anything that can be canceled or reduced, and so now I just need to square everything. That's y to the 6 because we multiply exponents. 2 to the second power, I power the coefficient, and x to the 4th. My final step is to work out the 2 squared, so it's going to be y to the 6th over 4, x to the 4th. That's the final answer. There's nothing that can be reduced or simplified. Number 6. This is the worst problem. We have a giant division here with an exponent. That means I'm going to have to do what to the 2 over 3? That's right. Flip it. I also have an exponent of a negative 3 here. But first I see that I can reduce the 6 and the 2. Then I'm going to flip everything. After that, I'm going to have to multiply everything in both sets of parentheses. All right, let's get started. So I'm going to flip it first, squared. I think I'm going to reduce this 2 and the 6, and that's a 3. Now I need to flip everything here. So the 3m goes on the bottom, the n goes on the top, and I change it to a cube. Okay, my next step is to square everything. So I'm going to do 3 squared over 2 squared, n cubed over 3 cubed m cubed. And do you notice that I just write down the 2 squared and the 3 cubed? Okay, next step. Here's the step where I cubed everything out. Now I'm going to square everything and cube everything that needs to be simplified. So 3 squared is 9, 2 squared is 4, 2 cubed is 8, not 6, because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. The n cubed stays the same. 6 cubed is 6 times 6 times 6, which is 216, and m to the third. Now, I have to check to see if anything can be simplified. I can reduce this 4 with the 8, where I'm going to mark both of them off, and it ends up with a 2. I can also reduce the 9 with a 16. So, 4 goes into 8, 2. Look, I did this crossways. 4 goes into 8, 2. I left the 2 there. 9 divides into 216 24 times. So right here, 9 goes into 9, 1. 9 goes into 24, 2, 16. Whoops, sorry, sorry, sorry. 24. Okay, then I also noticed that 2 goes into 24 12 times. So that's why... 2 goes into 2 once, I have this 1, and I have this 12 sitting out here. Okay, so now I have to write down everything I have left over. So on the top, I see a 1, I see an n to the 3rd, oops, n to the 3rd. In the denominator, I see a 1 and a 12, which multiplies to give me 12, and m to the 3rd. Now, I don't have to write that 1, but I can if you want me to. So the final answer is n over 12m to the third. Now I know that's pretty complicated, but that is something that you're going to be responsible for knowing how to do on your pre-AP Algebra 1 test. All right, Bearcats, that's it for now. Y'all have a great week. If you are confused about this at all, please come at 7 on Monday morning, and I would be loving to help you. I will also be staying after school this week on Monday and Tuesday. Your test over this information is on Friday. Have a great evening. Bye.